Hi, this is Jack Whitehall and I am going to be reacting to some images of myself from the past that I wish I could unsee. First up, this is an image that I see quite a lot. Um, it's of me on um, Would I Lie to You, the panel show, um, and that's a show that gets repeated as it turns out quite regularly on Comedy Central or BBC and uh, I always get screenshotted with this. Um, people send it to me on social media and ask me what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking at the time, but more importantly, when I see this image, I think, did I have any friends back then? Because surely if I did, someone would have said something. Like, I blame them, I blame my friendship group. My circle of trust and all of them let me go on national television looking like this and walk around every day with that on my head it's insane i have to reevaluate every relationship i had over that period of time including family members it's just atrocious i look like i've been like sketched by tim burton put my tongue in a electrical socket before I walked out onto the set of that show. It's, we haven't even got time to talk about the fact that I'm wearing a t-shirt and a cardigan, which is pretty atrocious as well from a fashion point of view. But I mean, that hair is just appalling. There's so much Dax waxing there as well. Thank f there wasn't a fire that night in the studio because I would have gone up like that. That was, yeah, an abomination. One of the worst. I don't think there's anything worse than that. Oh no, there is. Blondes have more fun, they said. This one didn't, he really did not. He just got teased mercilessly for this um, decision uh, to dye my hair blonde and the Alice band as well. I mean, in my defense, this was around the era of um, David Beckham being captain of the uh, national football team and he pulled it off, so I thought I could pull it off. Um, and yeah. I mean, it was a it was a real error of judgment. The other tragic thing about this this look, this like decision to become a blonde bombshell, was that I was desperate to keep the blonde hair for as long as possible. So I let the roots grow out, but I just wouldn't cut my hair. So at one point, it was that color, but only half of the hair, and then just dark roots. So it was like a sort of half and half. I, they're not even, not even like frosted tips, like you know several inches of blonde hair and then several inches of dark hair. It looked utterly ridiculous. Um, and yeah, I've never dyed my hair blonde since. I mean, a lot of people were doing it in lockdown and I was like, I just can't go back to those terrible, terrible times. Uh, I mean, I don't even look very happy in that photo. I mean, I'm not surprised I have that on my head. So yeah, that was not a good look. Yeah, right, that's me um, as a kid, quite sweet. I'm dressed there as Captain Scarlet. Captain Scarlet. Um, from the animated, not animated, the, the, the puppeted television show. And he, he, here lies the, um, the issue with, with me at this uh, period of my life. I was desperate to look like Captain Scarlet and I wanted my hair to look like Captain Scarlet as well. And I remember getting very annoyed with my mother that she couldn't make my hair look like Captain Scarlet because I have this cow's lick. And so the hair would always flop forward. And I was like, no, I want it to look like Captain Scarlet's. And his is in like a, like, it's like a block of hair because he is a puppet. And the arguments that I'd have with my mum um, and I thought she was, you know, a very, very cruel woman for not being able to render my hair like a puppet's and send me to school looking exactly like Captain Scarlet. I'm surprised I didn't ask to have the strings attached to my arms and legs. Uh, yeah, this is another strong look from my childhood. Um, Captain Hook. I mean, maybe that's problematic now, playing a man with a hook for a hand, but Am I about to get cancelled? This is going to be the thing that gets me cancelled, finally. I remember the main thing for me there, uh, being the moustache. I always loved dressing up, but I especially loved dressing up if it involved a moustache. From a very young age, I really pined for a moustache. I was obsessed with Errol Flynn in Robin Hood. I thought it looked so cool. And so, yeah, I wanted um, to have a moustache. This one, I mean, it's quite, quite a groucho marks, unless it's 
I think that was a stick-on moustache and not like just a sharpie across my top lip. Maybe I borrowed one from Michael. Michael had a few dressing up moustaches, or his were more, um, no, they weren't. Uh, they, uh, yes, that was a party. And I also remember from that party, I was dressed as Captain Hook and I insisted on everyone else coming um, as pirates as well, including my granny and grandfather who turned up as pi <laughs> pirates. Um, but they opted for more of a kind of like sailor look and my elderly grandfather was wearing like a little striped shirt and then a cravat around his neck. He looked a little bit like one of those guys from the Jean-Paul Gaultier advert, but 70 years old. Um, that's a pretty good photo. First Edinburgh. This is my first Edinburgh and uh, yeah, I think probably one of my first professional shoots. I'm clearly very excited to be doing my first professional shoot, amazed at the presence of a camera in front of me, so much so that I'm pointing at it like I'm some Amazonian tribesman that's never encountered technology before. Wide-eyed wonder, innocence, and again this bloody cardigan and t-shirt thing. That was a that was a look back then, you know. It was the height of indie rock and roll. Uh, I think we've got some festival wristbands on the hand as well. I didn't really go to many festivals, so I mean, they probably weren't even festival wristbands. They were probably wristbands from other things that I was trying to pass off as festival wristbands. Or I think you could buy festival wristbands or things that look like festival wristbands from like urban outfitters. So they're not even authentic. Um, so yeah, I've got those on the wrists and then some jeans that I probably need to be cut out of by the fire brigade at the end of the photo shoot. So tight. Literally had no blood going to my feet for about three years. Oh dear. Oh, that's me doing a charity gig. Still in the kind of indie phase, but like this is obviously the, the smart indie look with the little pencil tie and the a shirt that's too small for me. I think we've still got the festival wristbands, probably still the same fake festival wristbands. The hair's pretty bad. Again, like so much Dax wax in there. And I'd go out on stage like that as well and sweat buckets. So you'd have all this like greasy sweat running down your face. And still the skinny jeans as well, the skinny jeans and the, um, the suited top. This is all pre-stylist. This is before someone professional got involved looked at my wardrobe and was like, right, we need to sort that out. I was offered a stylist several times as well. I was like, no, 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 I've got a style of my own. Clearly I did not. Oh, same photo shoot. This is a pose that I've retired. You know, after this one, I saw these pictures back and I thought, I think that one's gonna have to go into retirement. Holding the imaginary globe in front of me. Uh, yeah, I think this one got rejected for the poster. My little red jumper. Could have used that for, for the Big Red Dog. NME Awards. I don't remember much about this because I think I was very drunk that night. Um, and I had worn a jacket that appears to be color coordinated with the NME logo, which um, I don't know whether I was aware of that, but it very much looks like I've made too much effort with the jacket and then really not enough effort with the rest of the outfit. In particular, the t-shirt that is essentially a male crop top. I mean, you know, it's so short, it looks like the kind of t-shirt Bruno would have worn on the red carpet. And the bright blue underpants, I mean, it looks like I'm wearing a cummerbund, but that's just my underpants that have been pulled up and the shirt was so small that we've got like the underpant to t-shirt ratio is all wrong there. And why are the jeans so low? And I mean, it's probably because they were so tight I actually couldn't pull them up to my hips. But yeah, that's not, that's not a good look. But you know, as I said, I was, I was really pissed that night. So thankfully there is an excuse to this look at least. All of the other, you know, outfits I chose whilst I was sober. I don't remember this one, but again, it's like the same shirt and tie, which were clearly on rotation at that period of my life. I don't think I owned many smart clothes, so I would just mix it up over and over again. At least the hair is more acceptable in that. I have had a haircut and there's slightly less wax in it, but still. Also not, not the most uh, natural of poses on the red carpet back then. This is not uh, someone that's necessarily at ease in front of the camera. Now, you know, I've worked out my pose over the years. Um, obviously we had the uh, 
early missteps, but uh, since then I've, I've, I've honed it um, and would know how to stand on a red carpet in front of a camera. But back then, look, I look like a, I've seen people more natural in hostage videos. Why do I look so, I look so wounded? But yes, I mean, maybe I look that bemused and befuddled because I'm wearing that. Although I probably thought that looked really cool back then. Horrible suit as well. This is obviously me in character, um, as my father in Jungle Cruise. Very nice suit. Tried to keep it, but they uh, they insisted that it was uh, kept in storage in case they need to rock it out again for more Jungle Cruises. I really like that suit. The only thing I didn't like about that suit is that it was a three-piece suit and we were filming in Atlanta at the height of summer, so I was sweating from every orifice. Ah, my moustache. Why did I have that moustache? I think it was a Movember thing. I feel like it was for charity. I look at my face and I hope it was for charity um, because again, not a great look for me. I remember the one show that I had it for was the one show that we had Daniel Ricardo on who literally came on and hammered me for two hours, handing me my ass on a plate. And it's very hard to like defend yourself when you're getting hammered and you have that slug crawling across your top lip. So yeah, that's the only time I've ever experimented with an actual moustache. All those years as a child thinking that that's what I wanted and that's what would make me happy and confident. And then I finally grow one on my face and I get ridiculed and look like that. If only that guy could go back in time and tell little me at that party that actually moustaches aren't all that. I mean, to be fair, if that guy turned up at a children's party, you would call the police. So yeah. Mm, that was the end of my uh, dalliance with uh, facial hair of that nature. You know what, having seen it back, I do feel like it might be time to bring back that. It might be time just to bring back that pose. So keep an eye out for it. Next time you see me on a red carpet, I'm just gonna throw that in, see how it goes down. Because I think if we ignore the weird little red jumper, I mean, <laughs> I've realized who it makes me look like. It's Neil Buchanan from Art Attack. The Red Jumper. And also that. It's like he's done one of those big pieces of art on the floor. That's what I was channeling. That's what was going through my head. I was like, let's give it the Neil Buchanan from Art Attack.